Hello, everyone. My name is Brianna Rodriguez. I'm the editor in chief here at Backstage, and I'm super thrilled that you guys are joining us for this next Actors Toolkit webinar. Just to give you guys a bit of a rundown of how this is going to go, we have a pre recorded video that we're going to run up top. Um, with a bunch of tips and tricks around casting trends for 2021 and how to make sure that you put your best foot forward uh, in this new year. Um, and then we will have Christine join us uh, right after that video to review some materials from backstage members as well as answer your questions live. So please, please stick around um, for the end because we can't wait to hear from you guys. And again, thank you so much for being here. Um, and I'll see you after the jump. Thanks, guys. Hello, I'm Christine McKenna Torella, a casting director and casting specialist at Backstage. I've spent 10 years in casting everything from commercials, film, TV, and theater. I've consulted with our industry experts, and this month, Actors Toolkit is diving into casting trends for 2021 to help you get hired today. I'm going to cover what to expect when auditioning and recording from home for voiceover and UGC projects, two big trends for casting calls this year, as well as top takeaways and quick tips to optimize your success applying an audition remotely. In this session, I'm going to work with a small group of backstage subscribers to improve their materials. I'll be answering your questions live and all the participants will be given a free workbook with tips, tricks, and backstage articles to help you pursue your dream career. Stick around and at the end of this video, we'll go live with your questions on these topics. Voiceover. It's an undeniable fact that there's been an increase in voiceover castings for projects ranging from animation to podcasts and radio plays. The biggest growth in voice acting this year is expected to be internet videos and digital ads. Here's why. Voice work and voice acting have fast turnaround times and they're versatile. It can be used for everything from B-roll to animation. Remote and at-home recording voiceover shoots have been common for years, and established actors already have their at-home equipment prepared. This means original voice content can be created while there are lockdown measures in place. Where should I be recording for best sound? This is a great question. Here, I defer to Jamie Muffet, one of our voiceover experts and the producer of In the Envelope Backstage's podcast. He says that as a voiceover artist, the room in which you record is the most important factor to consider. It's more critical than your mic, your interface, expensive preamps, or, or your computer and software. If your sound is compromised before it even gets into the microphone, no amount of expensive equipment is going to make up for some poor acoustics. So for your at-home video studio, it's crucial to prevent sound entering rather than preventing your own voice from exiting. And how you're going to do this is going to depend on environmental factors you're up against. So uh, maybe you are right next to busy traffic or subway tracks or general household noises. Get into the quietest space possible in your house, which is probably a closet. What equipment do I need? Well, here are the basics. You need a microphone, a preamp, a mic stand and software for a recording. Microphone prices can vary anything from $100 to $1,000. And our backstage expert George Whitman says, don't blow your budget on the mic. Figure out your budget for the entire process, including training, and make sure no area goes overlooked. There are countless different options as far as software programs are concerned, and price points vary. Many are very affordable and some are even free. Audacity, the program that I'm using today, is compatible with Macs, PCs, and tablets and costs exactly zero dollars. <laughs> there are some VO softwares that I think you should investigate. That includes Adobe Audition CC, Pro Tools S6, WavePad, and Twisted Wave. I am an on-stage actor, but during COVID, I bought a microphone and created a voiceover profile. Would you recommend I make a voiceover demo? So I'm a fan of the idea that more is more as long as it's quality material. I'd prefer to be able to see as complete a profile about you as an actor as possible. And a voice acting reel is helpful insight to your at-home capabilities. 
But I do want to highlight that voiceover auditions, they work a little different than in-person auditions. It's common to pre-screen the talent by asking them to record material as part of the audition process. This will include a small piece of text and ask you to put that in with the application. Pre-screens give the ability to ask the talent for material that's particular to the project. Never overlook that requirement when you see it as part of the application process, as it may be the only reel that the casting team listens to during that audition. Make sure you investigate voice acting guides, and if you have it in the budget, take classes with voiceover experts. Start there and add a reel when you can. UGC. First of all, I hear you, what is UGC, right? It feels like a term everyone started using a year ago. So it is user-generated content, and I guarantee you're seeing it in your social media feeds all the time. It's testimonial style. It's often shot at home, directly by the actors themselves, and it's digital commercials, incredibly popular with marketers right now because it feels warm, authentic, relatable for its intended audience. Flashy photo shoots don't reflect consumers today. Plus, it's a quarter of the price of a full commercial shoot. UGC is going to be an appealing option at least until people are free to get back on set for good. And due to the cost effectiveness of it, I think that we're going to see it long after. When I see a casting that is UGC, is it commercial or reality? Are they hiring me or me as an actor? The answer is going to be in the breakdown and submission instructions. What do they want you to record? Is it copy, i.e. an exact script, or is it improvised by you? Either style could be user-generated content. Do they want you to be an existing user or customer? Let's use an example. Seeking real diabetics for a commercial about medication. Well, you can't submit on that project unless you fit the bill. They are looking for real people with diabetes to apply. But if it's something like makeup or hair gel, then truly anyone could apply. So read the breakdown carefully to figure out if you should be applying and if they're seeking an actor to portray someone that uses medication or are they seeking, they're seeking someone that in real life uses that medication. What equipment do I need to be able to say I can shoot from home? I recommend a ring light for lighting and a stand for your audio. A pop-up background is optional or a clean wall to shoot against. A quiet room with little to no sound bleed is essential. Use your phone for remote auditions and self-tapes and tape horizontally. Your phone will tape at a much higher resolution than your laptop and you should tape on the horizontal, not the vertical, to avoid formatting issues. Set yourself up for success. Your setup is key. I'm going to share a TikTok campaign that we made backstage a few weeks ago that I think really does a good job at showing you how to set up your room in a really fast way. Hi guys, thanks for joining us and thanks for um, tuning in. I'm so excited to be going live again for our episode two. Um, just before I ask the actors that we I've been emailing and pre-selected today to come forward and chat about their profiles, um, I'm going to share a few things about how to improve your profile really quickly, right? So a little few things tips and tricks. Um, and I'm going to use my profile as an example. Um, just FYI, as I'm doing this, guys, if you have been emailing with me and pre-selected, please let Brianna or our, um, our backstage host know that you're here so that we can um, pick you out of the card very quickly. And please remember to put questions in the Q&A. I will be answering general questions um, at the end of uh, after speaking with everyone. One moment. Okay, fabulous. So here is the backstage home homepage, right? So let's go. I'm going to move my face. So I can't see myself. So here I have two different types of accounts. I'm a casting director and I also have a talent dashboard. And when I go into my talent dashboard, I can see my headshot resume, etc. And all the auditions that I've gone in for. And I, I very rarely go in for anything because I work here at backstage right and it's mostly for demo purposes that i have something set up but let me go into my profile 
So when I go into my profile, don't ignore this top part. So your profile completion score is seven, right? So they give they have a few ideas about how you can improve things really quickly. And it's really worth investing in this and taking some time to think about ways in which you can improve your profile. We do metrics. We, we understand um, what's popular with the people that are putting the jobs on this site. And if you have a score of 10, you are 14 times more likely to get an audition than someone with a lower score. It goes up uh, incrementally as you increase your score. Um, but I could, I could put credits. I don't have any because I, again, I'm a host here at Backstage and an expert because I've worked in casting. I could put additional photos. I just have one up right now, but I should maybe think of investing more in that if that's something that I want to, if I want to audition for more projects and I can put videos up. So really quick, really quickly, those are three things that Backstage automatically tells you how to improve. I have another idea for you guys that I want to share and it's in your account settings. So um, this is going to be uh, very much to your own personal preference, but we have a talent database that casting directors and creators can search when they're looking for special skills or particular things um, for a project. And so you should put your talent profile to have public or pr the profile visibility to be public and not private. It's a choice because it means that people can reach out to you that you have not applied for their project. But I do know a lot of our casting community um, might have a project up or may not have time to post with us and want to look for something in particular. And, and they do use our database uh, as a way of finding talent quickly. If it's not public, they can't search you because you're allowed to be private. You're allowed to only apply for jobs and have that visibility when you choose to. But it's something to think about as you're expanding your career. If you don't think you're getting a lot of opportunities, let's think about making your um, profile visibility public. Um, and with that, I'd love to have a chat with Stephen and Danielle. Okay, so Stephen. We're looking at your profile. I'm just going to go through it quickly again. You've got a lovely complete profile. We've got multiple headshots and performance shots. We've got a lot of skills here, which are super helpful to share with people. Um, you've put your credits both here in the body of your profile and you've put a resume on the side here. You've got photos and a video reel, and you've also got all of your links to your social media, which is very significant for you because if you see Stephen has a bit of a YouTube and TikTok following. Um, and I also love that you have added this self-recording area. So we have that option. It's been a new thing we added about six months ago. So if you do have at-home capability, it's super helpful to add that to your information so that people know um, uh, so that people know how to uh, exactly what you have uh, capability wise. So media is what I was on when we were chatting before. So uh, I think you recently just labeled everything. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yes. I recently put a name on my videos. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when I, when I, can we put your, can we put your on mute? Sorry. Oh, put yourself on mute for a second, Steve. Thank you. Um, so, cause we've got a bit of a lag. So with these reels, uh, they're, they're great. The material's fantastic. I'm not gonna play everything at the moment, um, but Stephen had uploaded them and they just said file image four or image two, you know, MP4. And they didn't have any information behind it. So I had to click on them to find out more. And I, I would love everything to be labeled in your video. So when you've uploaded it, please make sure that you uh, go ahead and label everything. I also think you're kind of burying the lead here. So Steve, uh, Stephen is a comedy sketch actor and creator. And um, in his reel, which I'm, I'm just gonna pull up really quickly, which may have a lag and it may not, but. <laughs> so there we go. That's Aquafina, right? So you've worked with Aquafina. And it doesn't really say that in your reel here. And I think that we should be adding in the details. You can add a description to your reel. And I think it really is gonna be useful for you, Stephen, to add in um, exactly what your reel contains. So you've got your dinosaur 
um, movie, I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, as one thing that's um, quite popular in the Chinese market. And then you also have this information that you have, you know, you, you worked with Aquafina in Nora from Queens. So I would really love a little more detail in the product description so that people know where to go immediately. The other thing that Stephen does really well that you guys can add to your profile if you haven't is highlights. So Stephen has, uh, as recently as last week, updated that he got a milestone of a million followers on YouTube and TikTok. That's really valuable to me, right? If I am working in UGC in the user generated space, I might be interested in someone that's kind of a pseudo influencer, which Stephen, I feel like you're, you're getting into that space, right? You're getting probably attracting um, people that are attracted to your profile because of the work that you've done on YouTube as a creator and on TikTok as a creator. So I think that it's time to update this above area too, Stephen. So I think the next thing we do is maybe actor, comedy sketch creator, and I think you reference influencer or you say TikTok and YouTube um, uh, sketch creator, something like that. You can think about the wording that makes most sense to you, but I, I want, I don't want to bury the lead here, right? Like you you're working quite a lot in the business you're doing, you're, you know, you're having a lot of success. So I'd love you to um, update that so that we understand your positioning and your branding, which is that you have a, a significant following online and you started it during quarantine, right? Yes, I did. Uh, I did start it during, uh, in May last year. Fantastic. Fantastic. Jen, Jen. Thank you for muting yourself again. Um, and then I don't have it up here, but do you also have your, you have a voiceover profile with us, don't you? Um, that, that, I'm actually a bit new to voiceovers. I just very recently got uh, my, my equipment, which is listed there, but I'm not uh, completely familiar with what a voiceover profile is. Yeah, yeah. Great. So I'm going to um, take you off the hot seat and we're going to talk about voiceover profiles more in a little minute. Um, but you definitely should be building a voiceover profile. First of all, you've got some really cool language skills. You've got um, you've got Mandarin, you um, are Irish and uh, and have lived in the UK. You're in America. I bet you can do a very good American accent. So I think that there's you're a very versatile and interesting sounding artist. And so that uh, I think is something you should be thinking about developing next. All right, fantastic. Um, let's go ahead and talk to Danielle. So Danielle, I know that you are having some um, issues with your video and that's totally fine. So you have a lovely profile. This is a great, great start. I love these model shots. These headshots do feel like a model shot in particular, okay? Um, and I think we, maybe as you are growing as an artist, think about expanding that a little bit about what you've got. Um, um, what, what shots you want to share with us. So if you have any performance shots, that might be interesting. And similar to Steven, um, I think that something that I've seen in your profile, which uh, is in your video reels here, you've labeled it as an acting reel, but it's actually, you have a really cool YouTube channel where you are talking about hair, right? You've got this really awesome, and, and you connect it to... Um, the details here, you've got your YouTube channel here, but you're burying the lead again, right? So um, I think that you're an actor and host, uh, as well as perhaps a, a YouTube, uh, a YouTuber, whatever, whatever way you want to reference that. But I think that you're doing such a lovely job with um, this material here, this acting, you're calling it an acting reel. And I want you to relabel that to reflect um, hosting on YouTube, right? And, and then um, I see that you've done some studying. You've, you know, you've taken some classes here. So I don't know if you've done any scene study work. Have you? First of all, let me just say this. I'm very new to, I'm pretty new to backstage and I'm just restarting. So my page is, is very, I never, looking at the prior guy that just came off Steven, I'm like, wow, I should have added more stuff or more of the things I've done. Cause I'm really getting back into this and really new at it. So you know yeah. yeah no no worries so that, that's kind of why i put you guys together because i think that you have the potential to build your profile a little more and yeah. make it a little clearer about what you're doing um and so steven 
Um, Stephen, I, I contacted last week and let him know that I'd like to show everyone his profile. And I think he then did a little bit of homework and, <laughs> and, and, and like really jazzed it up. So, but now you see kind of, even it's very, it's very easy to include additional things. Right. And I think Danielle, I was just so charmed by your YouTube channel and everyone, if you're interested in talking about hair extensions and wigs and things like that, Danielle has this really cool YouTube Aww. channel that I think you should check out because what you're doing is really fab and it's really the setup is great the I know you have a ring light I can like I can tell that you've done a really great job with that and then my second challenge for you um with the video reels and I know you've just started you've got um you've got a, a scene here that you've taped and I'd love you to make a difference between and I'm not gonna um I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but you've done the same background for that as you have for your hosting, what I'm calling your hosting reel. And I'd love you to re-tape this Lori scene, which I think is really great, by the way, great work with it. Um, I'd love you to retape it behind a clean wall, follow the rules of the video that we just showed and the workbook that we're gonna send out to you. Mm -hmm. Follow the rules to just differentiate that, right? So that there's you, Danielle, as host, and then there's you, Danielle, the actor. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. So that you're kind of just like there, you wear two different hats and I think you wear them both well. So that, like that's, it's going to be easier than you think it is. And then I'm intrigued by, and I know you're just starting back at backstage and, and you're kind of just building your profile. I'm intrigued by the fact that you're a dancer and a singer. Um, and maybe in time, you know, I'm a fan of high quality stuff. So you've got to, you know, really make stuff that you want to share on your profile mm -hmm. because someone like myself will be looking at it. But, um, you know, you, you, you're rating yourself as pretty high on those skill levels. So I'd love to see a little bit of material of both of those things so that you can be considered for projects um, that include dance or include singing. Right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Um, great. Can I thank you, Daniel? Have a great day. And we will obviously everyone that I speak with, by the way, guys, um, uh, Sydney's going to be next. Everyone I speak with, we speak with privately also. So um, we I'll do a private uh, session with them and we'll go into more detail. And I appreciate everyone's uh, bravery in sharing their uh, profiles today. Hey, Sydney, how are you? Good. How are you? Fantastic. I love this this yellow on you. It's a great color, and it, it's reflected in your headshots too, right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so Sydney, where are you where are you coming in from today? Uh, Windsor, Connecticut. Fabulous. Um, okay. Cool. So, I love that you have your mic set up already here. Oh yeah. Which is great. I think that. Um, in general, in future, if you can try to make it something that you don't have to hold so that if you were doing a scene, um, you're not beholden to it. And actually that's in the workbook guys. One of the things about just setting up your mic to one side so that you're not like attached to, it's not part of what you're doing when you send in your tape. But I love that you've set up this and you, the quality of this is fantastic. Your audio is amazing. Um, great. So. I, I love these shots of you. And I'm wondering that, is there a shot that, that we could lead with um, that's more like this one, right? Because, uh, and maybe a little closer up and feels just a tiny bit more like a headshot. Um, because this is a lovely commercial shot and I see your potential like for, for commercials projects. Um, but I, but I'd love to see an actual headshot to be the lead photo when I look at Sydney Parker, the actor. So that's just something to think about um, as you're building your profile. I'd love um, you to think about adding that highlight uh, highlights that I that we saw in Stephen's profile. I think that those are super helpful as projects come up. And then um, we have two videos. I'm going to share it, but turn off my sign because I don't want you to have to share your scene work with everybody. The work is really great. I'm going to have some comments about it in a second, okay?
So the work is really great. And now what I think we've done, because you've got a few good scenes here, um, is that we use these rules that we were talking about today and it's in the workbook and um, and we tighten up the shot so that I get to see the work a little more, right? It's, I think that it's a little, um, uh, it's just, it's not doing justice to all the work you're doing because it's not close enough to you. I can't see all of the work. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit off to the side. Um, and I think we can just make it feel a little more focused. And then when you are ready to upload those, we're going to label them so that we know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. I've already kind of had that point with someone else. Um, but I think you're off to a really great start with this uh, profile. Um, and, you know, Again, never overlook things like appearance, guys. You you know, add all the details that you can while you um, are building your profile up. And I actually saw some things, some links in your Instagram that I felt like maybe could be shots that you could share. Um, I'm not going to share your Instagram because <laughs> that might be private, and I don't want to do that to you. But um, there might be a few Instagram shots that uh, are kind of candid modeling shots that I feel like could be part of your profile. Okay. Yeah. Great job. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Is Liana here? Do we have Liana Sullivan? Liana should be on the way up. Okay, perfect. There she is. Liana, can you unmute yourself or turn on your camera and or? Might be having a connection issue, maybe. She's up here. Let's see if we can get her to start her video. We'll we'll skip uh, Liana just for a moment while we figure out if she's having some tech issues. And I have Isabella Flores. If Isabella's ready, let me grab her real quick. Hi there, can you hear me? Oh, great. Fantastic. Hi, Hi there. everyone. You. And Isabel, if you want to hang out, that would be great. And um, I'll speak with you in just a moment. Fantastic. Okay, great. So Liana, you have both a um, a regular profile and a voiceover profile with, yeah. with me, with us, with Backstage. Um, and what was the question that you sent in, in particular? Um, I didn't have a question. Well, so I didn't send a question in, um, but with my profile, I just wanted to see, is it too much information? Um, mainly, I have my hands in so many different pots that is it overwhelming and hard to decipher what exactly I do. Okay, great. So um, I do think that we have overloaded and overstimulated the voiceover section a little bit, right? So I'm gonna share, I'm gonna go out of your regular profile and into your voiceover profile just for a second. So you're, you're clearly, you know, you have the capabilities to tape, you're a talented voiceover artist. Um, and I just think we get into these voice styles and we should, um, we should edit slightly. So um, I, I believe because again, I've, I've listened to your reels and they're great, that you really do have the capability to, to do a lot of these, these styles, but I don't want anyone to not be able to see them uh, because you've got all of them here. So I would love you to pick your, your top 10 to 15 um, and edit it done. So, uh, and, and especially if there's something that you, you feel like you, of course, start with your strongest, um, and then if there uh, are a few things that you think you do but are not on your reel, um, I think that that's the way you, you select them. Um, so, so, so this is great. And I, and I can, in one way, I, I, I argued with myself about this. I was like, well, it's, it's great that she's sharing. It's, I, I want to know as much about Leanne as I can. But it's just a little too much and it's getting lost. So my thought on having all of those um, factors there was, I feel like it's more common for someone, for a casting person to go through and filter down to find what they're looking for. So I'm seeing those as 
search features rather than somebody coming to my profile out of the thousands and thousands that are there. Um, I felt like it was going to give me more opportunity to connect through filtering options. Yeah, and we and that is a great point that um, casting and especially voiceover, you look for particular voice traits. Um, but then I think that your voice demo would have to reflect kind of all of these signs, right? So, um, so I would I, I think that we can still edit on slightly. Um, my second thought for you here, which I was kind of interested to know more about when I went into your profile, are your dialects and accents in particular? Because I think that that, because I, you do have, what I hear on your demo is great, right? So you've got um, Australian uh, off the top of my head, you've got Australian, British and uh, and Southern, like a kind of a, a, a kind of country sound. Uh, I'm more than I so I call it country, but it's Southern. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the work is great. So I was curious if there are, if we wanted to separate your voiceover dialect work into a separate demo um, and, and really label those clearly so that we understand that we're gonna be hearing these snippets of sound. Okay. Yeah, you're not the first person to suggest having my character real, my accent real, commercial real, and so forth. So that's definitely something that I should work on. Yeah, it's it's great. I, and again, I think that you've got some really great material here so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Edit it on a little bit. And because of particularly your musician background, can you just, um, I'm gonna flip back to your regular profile. So you have it on your kind of branding, right? What I call here the branding area, right? Where you tell me you, quickly right your log line so when uh, can you tell me a little bit more about more your your musician experience um well i'm a singer i also play guitar drums keys anything i can get my hands on um i'm in a band i've been in other bands and um yeah i, I have my recording studio we're in right now um so just yeah anything more rock and roll and pop so. yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. So I think we should add some element of that, you know, here to the material that you have. Um, and it could go under voiceover, like, you, you know, because you can play something as, as, you know, something voiceover wise, or of course, video is, is very effective. So okay. thinking, especially because you're an artist who plays an instrument, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing, just a, a small clip a minute of what you do, one style of what you do, or or you can separate up into different styles. But I think that that's something else that um, I see written, but I don't see supported with with the material that's currently on the site. And I think that that's something interesting to explore because again, if you do have a skill, just to speak to everyone, a skill like um, an instrument that's super valuable. I think that under my audio clips, I do have a snippet of one of the songs, but it sounds like it, it might be buried a little too much then. Let me really quickly. Ha, yes. Got it. Um, and then, um, I have a hyperlink for my socials, I believe under there, um, a link to my band's profile with a couple of songs there as well, but just call to it a little more. Yeah, I would put in particular, so I had did not see this was under your audio mm -hmm. I would love one clip of video also here on the site it's okay. really smart to link everything I love that you've linked everything and uh, you know Stephen did it too other people that I've highlighted have done it also um today and I think that it's just smart to keep everyone on one in one place so they don't miss something too right so especially mm -hmm. I'm selling you nothing today, guys, right? You've already got a subscription with Backstage, so it's all included. So I think, you know, if it is a special skill that you have that you're super proud of, you know, sharing a video of it um, on profile is really smart. Thank you, Leanna. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate it. More with you. Thanks. And then Isabella, you had a question about rates with voiceover. Yeah. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I was wondering, there are um, there are a lot of like not not paid gigs on there, which is like 
fine and uh, and cool. But there are also some gigs that I find um, on backstage and other sites where they they have like this whole big job and then they're like, um, we we pay three cents per word, which is like I don't know less than a fifth of what the like average rate would be. Would and I just wanted to know if you would recommend auditioning for that and then like in your cover letter saying typically like the GVA rate guide says that it's this, but um, like I'd be willing to negotiate something close to that or or if you just think it would be better to just pass on those auditions. Yeah, so, so I think that we're in a very strange space uh, or a very interesting space, I suppose the other way to think about it. Um, and you have, uh, just to give a really quick overview, so Isabella has a lovely voiceover um, experience and, and, and she has material here. She has her own home studio. Um, I do have one thing that I'd like to add is that on your website, um, you have your commercial demo, but also your home at home raw audio sample. And I think that that might be something you want to add to your backstage profile because it's super valuable for people to understand the sound level that you work with in your home, right? So that's for other people too. Everything that I'm speaking about, you know, is hopefully applicable to our audience here that you can apply um, to your own profile. And so I think that that's something you might want to add here to just simple an idea of, of the fact that you really have an at-home setup right like you you know what you're doing um the other element to this and i'm sorry if it's in this commercial reel and i didn't get to uh you know i i've forgotten at this point because i've listened to a lot of reels for this project um do you have your french do you have anything french recorded um not currently but so I think that that, again, that is a super special niche skill that will be very appealing. I'm seeing a lot of projects um, that are looking for language skills right now on this site. It's definitely a trend. So think about that. Um, I think that if you can just get a, a 60 second clip of you speaking French um, would be really, if it is truly something you're you're comfortable with. Um, oh, it's, it's under accent, but do you speak... You speak I, it also? I speak I'm fluent, yeah. Then I think that's something we definitely should be highlighting by you. So to the question in particular about rate. So I'm all I, I, I see it two ways. You you take the project at a lower rate if you are interested in the team and you know the work is good and you know that the end product is going to be something that you want and you want to establish that relationship with them because uh and you don't take it if if it's not the rate that you currently work at, right? Because you are an established artist, people, you're allowed to decide if you don't want to take non-paying gigs anymore. You're allowed to decide. There's a, a line in the sand. You guys are hoping to make this career as the career that sustains you, right? And, and I really do support when someone says, hi, I'm at a place where you know, $100 or $150 for this whole project, and it's a buyout isn't for me. And a buyout means that you, um, you know, you just get one payment and that's it, right? Um, there's a great, there's a great gauntlet of projects that are up at the moment. Have I seen that with voiceover trend, sometimes it's still paying really, really well. And sometimes it's really a shoestring budget and they're trying to explore something uh, experimental maybe, right? Like they didn't get a green light for a full project yet. And so the pay is a little lower. So that's that's the balancing act for you. Um, if it is a team, if it is a project, if the work they do when you kind of look into them is something interesting, I would say it might be worth you worth you exploring that and kind of developing that relationship uh, and taking the lower pay and letting them know, guys, my rate is actually higher when they hire you. Mm -hmm. um, but when something is a rate, on the site it's unless it says negotiable or unless it says you know uh, stipend possible or something that they might be budgeted for they're not budgeted for more at the moment mm -hmm. yeah perfect but i think it's a really great question and i'm i'm so glad you asked it because um you know i think that it's it's a very valid thing to think about you t for everyone for every type of job uh, everyone that's listening you take the job because you can commit to it 
for the pay that it's giving to you. Otherwise, you're, you can't be the professional that you want to be on set. Thank you, Isabel. I look forward to chatting to you more in future. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Um, do we have time for, for uh, someone else or do we have some questions? We do have questions. We have time for more people if you would like to bring those people as well. It's up to um, you. I know I have, I have Chris and Maeve, but guys, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna bring you forward for next class and you and, you and I are gonna talk, speak privately um, just so that we definitely get some questions in um yes we do have a good yeah. amount of questions oh, right. guys if you have more drop them in the q a box please try and book us on voiceover and ugc if possible since those are the topics that we want to really nail for this one if you have more general ones throw those in there as well and we'll get to them if, if we can um for those of those who missed the intro by the way i'm brenna rodriguez i'm the eic here for context as to why i'm here um I just want to say also before we dive into questions, I, I love seeing you guys go off in the chat box, supporting each other, really uplifting each other, exchanging information, exchanging, you know, personal info. This is what we need in this, in this crazy time. And I'm so, so happy that, that I, to, to be a part of this community. And I just want to say something useful here. If you, if you gathered, you know, value here, please spread the love, tell everyone that you know about it, any actors, um, don't be a gatekeeper, share, share all the things that you find useful for yourself as well. Um, and for that, with that rather, I will dive into questions with Christine. Um, this one comes from Kelly Grego uh, on voiceover slates. Do you need to slate in character or use the voice you're about to use for the role you're auditioning for, or should you use your normal voice when slating? Um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of following the rules, right? So make sure that whatever the breakdown says, you're really sticking to it. If they don't need uh, you to do a slate, I don't, you're applying through in digital, right? So, so I don't need it. I don't need you to do it in character or or to uh, do anything else with it. I just need it to be labeled correctly when you upload it because if I download it, it will download with your name on it. So um, the short answer is I don't need it, but if I did need it, you could do either. Amazing. Do you, I, don't, I might be putting you on the spot a little bit here, Christine, but Anita Clark wants to list the voiceover software that you mentioned in the video up top. If you know any off the top of your head, maybe just get rid of those. By the way, those will be coming in a workbook afterwards. So if you don't yeah. get them here, that will come after. A million percent. So I use Audacity. Um, there is, oh gosh, let me pull up my whole list here for you. Um, come come back to me, give me the next one and I'll, and I'm just pulling up my, my file for you guys so that we have it. Absolutely. Uh, this next question comes from Aaliyah Williams, uh, who's never done voiceover. Um, she wants to know, are classes required or can I just start to experiment? So I, I said this last episode, we talked about making self tapes for practice and making self tapes uh, to kind of keep busy and feel comfortable in front of camera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that the same applies for voiceover. So there's a lot of material out there. In fact, we have some samples on backstage that you can um, kind of explore. Get super curious, okay? So start listening to other voiceover um, artists. You definitely need to uh, be in a super quiet room. So I, I, um, I do the podcast in the envelope, which is our backstage uh, awards season and beyond uh, uh, a uh, podcast which is really cool but I have to record it in like a, a tiny closet surrounded by my clothes because no nowhere else is is good enough and then I also still have my software that um that I that I upload it with and then I have an editor right <laughs> so who makes me sound better than I am um and you don't need all of those things but you're gonna um you start experimenting. So get into the closet, you know, I, I try the software. Again, Audacity is one of the ones that are free. I've got the answer for the rest of them. So we've got, I, I recommended uh, Pro Tools S6, uh, Adobe Audition CC, WavePad and Twisted Wave. Those are kind of, as well as Audacity. So those are the ones that I recommend you kind of start exploring and figure out which one's easiest for you to do. Um, and then just, you know, start getting curious about voiceover reels and the level of quality that you're hearing. 
that's what I'd recommend. But yes, get curious. Let's go. Try it. Share it if it's really great. Keep it to yourself and kind of make it a practice if it's not. Now's the time, guys. Like, yeah. when, when else are you going to have time to just experiment with a potential voiceover career? Do it now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this one is an anonymous question, but I think it's a good one. Uh, quickly wondering if headphones are a decent enough mic. Are they able to work if one doesn't have the resources to get a professional mic at the moment? Yeah. So um, again, going back to Jimmy's advice, uh, uh, Jimmy's my producer for an envelope. Um, he he says that it's it's all about the sound quality being clean as clean as possible in the room that you're in, right? So and um, recently my mic stopped working after years of commitment so I had a slur and it it stopped working and we had to tape very quickly and that's what he recommended so he did recommend that I use the um iPhone headphones because it's actually quite a high quality mic it's not ideal long run I think that as you explore this um it's going to be worthwhile uh putting that hundred plus dollars into it uh but while you're dipping your toe in and if it's not something you can do right now um start start trying to do the best you can with what you have amazing um so there's another question in here that's related about having an affordable about getting an affordable at-home studio take a look at the workbook that we send after this because it has a whole guide in there about how to build your at-home voiceover studio with varying budgets. Um, so make sure that'll be sent out by email um, in the coming days after we wrap this. So please make sure to, to check that out. Um, let's go on to the next one. I got my eyelines here because I'm looking at all of your amazing questions. So. <laughs> um, here comes one from, let's see, from Emily Doy. How do you actually get into voiceover if you've never done it before? Do you have to create a reel? Is that the best way to get into voiceover? So I said it in the, in the video intro. Uh, so yes, a reel is great if you can build it. Um, and I want to be completely transparent that for voiceover projects, we see that people pre-screen a lot. So they're going to upload a piece of script um, with the uh, uh, with the job posting, and they'll want you to do a little bit of it, and that will be the material they consider for the project. Um, they're also going to assume that if you're applying, that you have some kind of at-home capability, right? Like that's going to be the that's going to be those are going to be the top applications. Um, and the top applications will also have reels that they can explore a little further. Um, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, there are differing degrees of things. And if you're really right for a project, they're going to explore you further. Um, did I answer that question? I feel, I feel like I lost the exact thread of the question, Brian. I'm sorry. I think that was a good answer. I think that that, that was nice. Yeah. And I think, sorry, where to start? That's what it was. <laughs> but so sorry. Um, where to start? So we're going to give you this workbook. This is all free editorial on Backstage. It already exists. We have a very large voiceover guide and it's going to feel a little overwhelming. That's why we give the workbook and I give so much emphasis to it. Um, so you can start just like bite size. Just, just start like reading the articles, figuring out what the standard is, what to expect, and then you're going to feel confident and prepared to audition. Love it. That's what we're hoping. Yeah. Uh, this is another getting started question. How do you get into union work and how important is it, do you think, from a CD's perspective? That one comes from, oh, that's an anonymous question as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we see um, projects that are union and non-union. Um, and sometimes the non-union stuff does pay very well. Uh, of course, SAG after a scale will be you'll have a little more padding, right? Like it's it's definitely, um, and you'll have possibly residuals, but the thing to keep in mind about that right now is with UGC, which we were talking about earlier, user generated content and voiceover for digital ads, you're actually not going to have a cushion of pay, right? Like they're going to pay you probably once. There's going to be a, a buyout that's called. Um, you're going to get payment once and then they're going to use it for a certain amount of time, uh, maybe one year or it's going to be, you know, for the entire life of the project. Um, so I think that 
when it comes to union, union kind of finds you when it's when you're ready for it in your career. Um, don't just join equity or SAG after because you think that there's prestige to it. There are a lot of projects that are non union. And, um, and I think that, you know, really start looking at all the projects that are online and kind of exploring, okay, everything that's interesting to me is SAG after or equity. And so if I could join, I'd like to. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind a little differently, it's set up a little differently from equity. SAG after can, um, if you're right for a project for, for something, um, they can Taff Hartley you, right? So they can, they can speed up your paperwork and, and, and um, get you into the union because they want you for the project. It's a little easier than with the equity projects that um, are a little more weighted to uh, protecting the equity members that are existing, right? They want you to make sure that you've explored all the equity members before you kind of go to a non-union person. Whereas SAG-AFTRA, um, there's a little more flexibility about adding as many people that you need um, to your project, regardless if they started union or not. That was a great answer. Christine, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> This next question. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of years in the casting world. <laughs> years in the casting world. Um, this one comes from Jim Hubka. Uh, can you use auditions that you've done for specific VO roles in your public profile for any? You broke up a little bit, but I think it was, can I use auditions I've had before for my VO? Yeah, if you've done specific VO roles. Can you put those on your on your public profile for anyone to listen to? Um, so be yes, um, but just be careful. So if uh, if the project hasn't launched yet, you shouldn't be putting it up there just in case. Um, you know, especially like there's pilot material. Sometimes I see actors using that as their reel, and and um, that's a little more proprietary. Like people don't really want you to share that yet. But in general, if once it's out in the domain, you know, I could listen to a Dorito ad and write down the words and record myself saying them. Right? Like it's uh, it, it becomes it's easier to just use. Um, and I think that oftentimes that's really great material to use audition material uh, because it, because you've probably been selected for it because someone was interested in you doing it because it's right for you. It's your right type. So I think that that's interesting material to look at um, and just use the best of what you have. Lovely. This one's actually from Danielle, who was who was on stage earlier. Um, when doing an audition, uh, and there's a role where you have to read with someone else, but you can't find a friend to read the script with, and you do it alone, are you overlooked for that or penalized uh, by the casting director when you send in that tape? So if there are sides, you're going to have to have someone reading back to you. There is, There are a few apps out there, and I don't know the name of them off the top of my head and we might have it in one of our guides actually um that you can use uh that say the lines back to you so that you do have someone to read with so you could record yourself saying the lines and it, it's an app that follows you it's something kind of crazy ai i'm not, i don't really i don't know but investigate because there's they definitely exist um so with is if you can get a live reader it's better right and so um, having a buddy, like having someone that is your friend that you say, I'm going to do this for you. Please do this for me. It's going to take 10 minutes. You know, um, I'll always, I'm always going to pick up the phone or do it for you when you need it. Also, um, you know, just ha having a buddy and trying to get into that network as soon as possible is going to be really great for you, Danielle, because again, a live reader is really important. I've talked about this before, and I'm just going to cover it really quickly. If uh, if the person that you can get to read with you is not an actor, that's okay. We get it, especially right now. It's a pandemic. You shouldn't be going out of the house like if you don't have to, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and if you have to use someone that's a non-actor, try to work through their sides with them. Be a director. Put your director hat on. Try to work through those sides a little bit so that they uh, can uh, hopefully say the words with a little bit of jazz, right? Um, and really help you shine. So those are my recommendations. You can get a non-actor to do it and work with them a little bit. 
investigate app, digital app stuff um, to see if there's an app out there that works for you that can call back your lines. Um, and then, you know, finally uh, get a buddy. Amazing. There's some people have dropped some recommendations for um, audition reader right. in the comments as well. We audition. I think cold read app was one of them. Um, so check out the, the responses there from some other backstage members who or users who are um, who can who can help. Um, this one, this question actually relates a little bit back to the first profile we reviewed Stevens. Um, he has obviously a, a formidable uh, following on social media. Uh, he started in May, so he did it, you know, it, it can, it can scale and, and, you know, actually Stephen, I want to probably interview at another time because he just started making his own content and it's little comedy sketches, they're two minutes or one minute long. Um, and he just explored what he already was good at and he, and the, the audience kind of followed. Sorry, Brianna, go on. No, that's great. I mean, I do, I, I, I always tell actors to, to join TikTok because um, the, the algorithm prioritizes good content. It doesn't matter what kind of following you have. If you put something out there that resonates with people and people like it, it'll get served to more. And the tower you can build of 1.2 million per person following in a, in a few months. Um, so it's always, I, I mean, I'm obsessed. It's, it, that's just me personally though. <laughs> But this question, um, as a CD, do CDs look at social media following uh, when they're looking at uh, perspective cast or is that more of an agent thing? So uh, I, I think it's useful, especially with this topic we were talking about today, the user generated content space, because mostly, most likely um, it's gonna be a digital ad, right? So it's gonna be living in the social media space to begin with. And so if you already are very clickable, people are gonna, um, it's gonna be appealing to them, right? Um, what, I, what I would say is that yes, even in theater projects I've worked on, social media has kind of come up at, at times um, because if you have a following that's great, but it doesn't mean that it'll translate into tickets, right? So, it, you know, it's, it's only bankable sometimes. Um, and then for you as an artist, um, it's just something that you either want to invest in or you don't, and there's no wrong or right answer there. Um, I do know that when I Google most people, um, backstage is often their top thing that comes up, by the way, because we have great social media. So uh, it's a way to find you. And um, so keep that in mind with the things that you share. Um, and I like to say that if it is a public profile, a mix of professional stuff, like you uh, recording something for auditions or you working on a script, doesn't even have to be that you're necessarily like on set, right? Cause we're all just working on it. You singing a little bit of something or you doing your comedy sketch like Steven started. Um, doing a little bit of something that feels professional and then mixing in personal. I think that that's the, the perfect way to do it. Lovely. Christina, it's always such a pleasure to have you share your wisdom with us. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for, for this session of Actors Toolkit. Uh, please keep an eye out for more information on the next one. There, We have it on our uh, slash magazine, backstage.com slash magazine homepage, where you can look at the slate schedule all the time. Uh, you can see all the past guests that we've had as well. Um, if you have RSVP for this, which obviously you guys have, you should be getting uh, more information as it comes through the workbook included. I see some people asking what the workbook is. It's just a breakdown of uh, everything that Christine covered here, along with some additional um, articles and guides for you guys to really dig into um, and, and, and learn even more. Um, and if I can add one more thing, guys, sure. send your questions to editorial if we didn't get to cover it today, editorial at backstage.com and they'll forward it to us. Um, it really helps us figure out what you guys want us to talk about, what you want us to research and cover. And um, I'd, love, I'd love to start that dialogue with you. So although we may not get back to you, I will definitely look at your questions. That's such a great tip. Yeah, please, we always wanna be in service to you guys. So if you have ideas, uh, things you wanna hear more about, as Christine said, please share them. Um, thank you guys so much. Be safe, be well, uh, and we'll see you next time on the Actors Toolkit. Thanks, Christine. Bye guys. Bye.